So let's talk about some other draw commands now, uh, like the arc command and the circle command. Let's do the circle first because it's a little easier. So for the circle command, I can type C for circle, unless you've customized your shortcuts. A lot of companies change C to work with the copy command, but by default it's C, or your icon is up at the top in the draw panel. And you really only need two pieces of information for a circle. The first is the center point, and the second is your radius. So again, the radius is half of the overall size, if you remember geometry class. So if I'm trying to draw a dining room table and the table is six feet across, then my radius is going to be three feet uh, as half of that. And then enter after you type your radius. So again, the C for circle, click your start point, which could be an object snap of something else if you wanted. And then I can type in the radius that you need and enter. Remember, if you forget the steps or what you need to do, read the command line because it will remind you about what AutoCAD is waiting for as you're drawing. So the circle command is very easy that way. Now the arc command. I'm going to type A for arc. By default, the arc command wants three points. A midpoint, I'm sorry, a start point, a midpoint, and a end point. So let's just practice that a couple times. So A and then space or enter. Click once, click again, and click a third time and he just drew an arc. Now, I made those not in a straight shot. If you draw them all kind of in a row, then you're going to end up drawing a really flat arc that almost looks like a line. So kind of draw them a little bit more randomly located, and then you get more of a curvy arc. So again, A space, and then you click three points, the start, the midpoint, and the end. Now remember, uh, the grips idea, after you draw something, you can always select it. And then let's look at an arc and what grips you have available there. There are a lot more grips on an arc because you have more uh, information that you can customize about it. Like the square grip at the end will allow you to drag that endpoint anywhere you want. One of the great things about arc is how customizable the shape is with the grips. So if you don't like it at first, you don't have to delete it. A lot of times I see students do that, and they just keep trying to draw new ones over and over, when a lot of times it's easier to just modify the shape by using the grips. The triangle at the end will lengthen the arc without changing the center or the radius. So that's kind of handy if you want to make it a longer or shorter piece without changing the other information. Now keep in mind, if your object snaps are still on, that can affect things as you move grips around. So the uh, circle at the midpoint of the arc will uh, also kind of stretch it out to be different curves. Really, it's changing the radius. But um, And then the uh, triangle at the midpoint will change the radius while leaving the center point the same. So you have lots of flexibility in how that arc is customized with the grips. OK, so now that's the basic arc command. Now you do have other options during the arc command like center option. Sometimes you don't know where those midpoints of the arc need to go, but you need to be precise. So a lot of times it makes sense to start the arc command and then do the center option to where you give it a center point. And now you only need to give it two clicks, a start and end. So it's always three pieces of information, but what three pieces you can kind of change. So you can do arc and then center by hitting C space. And then now you click a start point and an end point. Just note that when you draw an arc this way, you're always drawn in, in a counterclockwise direction. So you kind of have to plan ahead for that sometimes. Now in this next segment, I'm going to talk about the rectangle command and also how to draw lines at different odd angles. First, I want to clean up some of this other stuff. So remember that you can put a window around your objects. Don't forget, in order to delete them, I mean, to select them all quickly. Uh, don't forget that a green window will select anything that even touches the green window. That's called your crossing window. Versus a blue window will only select objects completely enclosed by that window. And then I can press delete. So now I have kind of a blank slate again. And uh, we can now talk about rectangles and drawing some other uh, more advanced lines. 
So the rectangle command is REC, or your icon in the draw panel. And uh, again, uh, we're going to click a first point, and then you can move your mouse around and see what's going on. We're uh, basically given the rectangle diagonal corner points in order to determine the size and location of it. So we already gave it a first corner. You have a couple different options in how you give it the overall size and where the rectangle goes. So the first option is at the bottom we have three ways, three different options there. I'm going to do D for dimensions. D for dimensions. And then again, read the command line because this is one command where there's uh, several steps. So if you forget, read the command prompt and that's going to remind you. Specify length for rectangles. So the distance that it's asking you about now is in the X direction. So remember that's horizontally and your little UCS icon will remind you of that. So uh, I'll accept the 10 feet that's in these pointy brackets for right now. Otherwise you could type in any size you needed. And now specify the width. So this is your Y direction. So for right now, I'll just hit enter to accept that as well. Now that looks really small, so I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that a little better. There we go. Now I'm not quite finished, so don't hit escape too fast. You can see that I can flip that rectangle up, down, left, or right based upon which direction I want the rectangle to go. Because it doesn't know whether or which of those four I want at this point. So basically you just move your mouse around until you get it in the direction that you like and then click to actually drop it. So let's review that again, REC space, click your first point, D for dimensions. Then we can type in or accept the default if we want of the uh, horizontal or X size and then the vertical or Y size, type in or accept the default. And then we have to click your mouse to accept which direction that rectangle is going to go. And then the command automatically exits. Now your other option, if you like this better, REC space, click your first point. You can type it all in at one time if you do it in the right format. So that would be the at symbol, like you would use in your email address, shift two to get the at symbol. And then I can type the X size, comma, Y size. So if I wanted another 12 inch by 12 inch, I can do 12 inches, comma, 12 inches, and enter. And then you will see your rectangle pop up right away. So in some ways, I think that weighs faster, but you have to be able to remember the right format of at, the at symbol, X, comma, Y. We don't want any spaces because hitting space would be the same as hitting enter. So at x comma y, and then your rectangle will be drawn slightly faster if you're a good typer and you can remember that format. Now the same holds true for lines. What if I want a line that's at an odd angle? I can type in that formatting as well. So I'm going to start a new line. Click here. Let's say I needed it to go at like 13 and a half degrees or something odd like that. I don't want to really have to go and change my polar settings just to do that because maybe this is a one-time deal. So I started my line. It's waiting for the second point. I can do the at symbol and then type in the length. Maybe I'll do uh, 24 inches right now. Obviously in the real world you have specific problems you're trying to solve so you're typing in whatever the length you actually need. And now for the angle I need the caret icon or the caret symbol that points toward the left which you can get to by using shift and the comma key. Shift comma. You'll notice there's that little kind of caret symbol pointing toward the left. That's what you input for the angle. So now I said 13 and a half degrees. I'll just stick with that 13.5 and enter. And now I have a line that's at that odd angle and at a specific length. So again, you start your line, click your first point, and it doesn't really matter what you do with the mouse after that because we're going to type in the format we want. So we do at, the at symbol, the distance, the angle caret, which is shift comma, and your angle. Just remember that your angle corresponds to the coordinate system based upon what I went over in the previous video, which is this. 
So if you want it to go, you know, up and toward the left, then you do something between 90 and 180, or down to the right would be something between 270 and zero, et cetera. So sometimes you might have to do a little bit of math in your head as far as maybe you want it to be 30 degrees past 270. So then you got to think, okay, that's 300 degrees. So you have to sometimes be able to do that. If you're just learning, you can put a diagram like this, you know, next to your computer, and that helps you to kind of get used to it. So what are the formats for how we can type in information? Like we've talked about just feet and inches, but what if I want fractions and things like that? So I can type in formats as follows. I can type in obviously just feet, like three foot. I can add inches onto the end of that, like six, and then the inch mark, the inch being the double quote mark. Now, AutoCAD, if you have your units set up the way that I've been teaching these videos, your units are set to architectural with inches as the default unit. And what that means is, if you don't put a unit, AutoCAD will assume inches. That's very important because if you want something to be a certain number of feet, then you have to put the foot mark. So I could put three and then the foot mark and then six inches, and AutoCAD is going to assume three foot six. So I don't have to put the inch mark because that's the default. Now, if I want it to be three foot and six and a half inches, I can do 0.5, three foot, 6.5, I can do that. If I want it to be three quarters, I could do 7.75. Some of those decimals are fairly obvious. Now, what if it's more of an odd one or I don't know the decimal and I need to type the fraction? I can't just type the fraction smashed up against the six because when you do, then you can see how it looks like if I'm trying to do three quarters, you can see it looks like 63 over four. So that's not really what I meant. So if you put a dash, a hyphen, now I can type three over four and AutoCAD will understand what I mean. So again, if you want a decimal, that's fine, like 6.5 or 6.75 for three quarters. If you want a fraction, then do six and then a dash and then three over four. And the AutoCAD will then understand what you mean. So those are all acceptable ways to input your sizes. The last draw command that I'm going to go over for right now during this kind of basic video set is the polyline command. You'll notice the polyline command is one of the ones that's not obvious up here. Um, it's underneath this little black arrow here under line that you can get to the polyline that way. The polyline command you can also get to from your shortcuts and that would be PL, PL. So if you think about what is, what is a polyline, well the word poly always means multiple. So it's basically a combined um, bunch of combining a bunch of lines into one object. So a polyline is made up of multiple segments. So you draw it just like you do a regular line. You click and then you click a second point and then you can continue clicking points. You could input your dimensions in the same way, you can control the angle in the same way as regular lines. What's different is when you're done, you can hit escape and all that, just like normal. When you select it, you can see that it selects it as one object and not three, because I drew three segments. So if I had drawn that as a line, those would be three separate pieces. When I draw it as a polyline, it's one object, and a lot of times that's very handy. Because many times you're drawing um, something that needs to be kind of consolidated and stay together as a unit. Or it represents one object. And so you can draw it as a polyline if you want. And then it's easier uh, to kind of keep that contained as one thing. So you have square grips to move around those handles. Just like with a line, except it's even more powerful with a polyline. Because it all being connected together, it changes the shape easier. You also have an additional um, grip or kind of a different grip at the midpoint of the line. You can see it's that little kind of blue um, slit. If you hover, you can see that allows you to add a vertex very easily. And click Add Vertex and click where you want a new point very, very easily that way.